Hmm. What's going to happen to our current year 10s when they sit their GCSE exams in the summer of 2021? If you're the parent of a year 10 child, you may be thinking, how are they going to sit their exams? They've already missed out on four months of face-to-face -face education. Or perhaps you're home educating, but it's been completely disrupted because you're now having to work from home. Or because you can't gain access to the resources that you would normally have because of COVID-19. So how can they sit their exams? Well, in this video, we're going to look at what the government have proposed. My name is Kelly and I'm a private tutor. Now Ofqual have stated that they want to try and ease the exam process in the summer of 2021, but they're still going ahead of it. And the reason why they're going ahead with it is because they believe that they don't want to disadvantage children from pursuing their academic career or indeed going off into work or apprenticeships or traineeships. So that's the mindset behind it. So how are they going to do this? Well, nothing's set in stone yet. In fact, you can still have your say. There's a link in this video about the survey in which Ofqual are asking everyone to put their opinion across so that they can collate everything and then make a decision about what will happen in 2021. And the deadline for this is the 16th of July. So it's imperative if you want your voice heard that you register and vote. There's a blog to this video as well, and it has a step-by-step -step breakdown of what you can do and where to find it. But also with this video, um, somewhere in the comments either above or below, there will be a link to the website so that you can have your say and your opinion. So Ofqual, which is the Office of Qualifications and Examination, have stated that they are going to try and mitigate the loss of face-to-face -face teaching. And they plan to do this in a few different ways. So first of all, they want to try and maximize teaching hours. And to do this, they want to reduce practical work. So for example, in English, students will sit a, um, a language examination whereby they give a presentation. Now, rather than recording it, which is normally done, so the teacher will record it, it's usually done in a group or a class and there's question and answers and then the video recordings are sent off to the examiners. Now, this all takes a lot of time. And of course, if they are in a group, it runs the risk of, you know, potentially having health and safety impact with the current COVID-19 situation. Now, if there's a local shutdown, how can these students then sit that part of their examination? Now, although this speaking exam has no bearing on the final GCSE grade, it's still important. Why? Because it gives an opportunity for students to craft a speech on a topic of their choice and to answer questions about it. Now, let's face it, that is so important no matter what you do. Communication skills, your ability to listen, your ability to confidently speak. So they don't want to scrap this either. So what have they come up with? Well, they're proposing that rather than having it in necessary group setting, it can be done with a teacher and that pupil. So it immediately you know, minimizes the risk of having numerous people. And that way then it can also be done remotely if needs be. So the student can record it or they can come up with some arrangement whereby the teacher will have the video. The teachers no longer will have to submit it to the exam examination boards. And again, that reduces the time in preparing the paperwork and getting that delivered. And that way then it frees them up for more time to have teaching. Furthermore, what they are trying to say as well is with the sciences, there's a real practical element in the labs. So again, they're saying that rather than students participating that, because again, let's face it, not all schools can have you know, one set of equipment for per student. So to minimize any risks, and again, if there's a lockdown locally and a school is shut, then they won't be able to go in to do it. 
So they're going to have it whereby the students can observe and make notes on a teacher performing an experiment using the lab work or create a video in which the students will watch. Geography field work. Well, they were initially thinking about having students go to a localised site, maybe having one on school and conducting their field work there. But again, some schools don't have access to vast grounds to carry out field work, so it wouldn't be fair. So they're considering not having that element. For art and design technology students, where there's a practical element, they are saying that they're going to scrap that. Instead, for design and technology, for example, engineering, they have decided that they're going to allow students to come up with the designs that they would make in the final piece, make the notes, the research, but they won't build the product. Why is that? Well, again, it might be difficult for students to source all the materials with the current situation. Again, they may need access to specialised equipment that they may not be able to if there's, again, another lockdown. Or indeed, it might create more of a risk factor if there are numerous students using the equipment. For art students, most crucially, usually they will sit an exam that's between 10 and 15 hours. That's being potentially scrapped as well. Instead, it will be based solely on coursework, their portfolio of work. So these are real practical and pragmatic steps to try and minimise the risk and to maximise teaching hours. Because again, by reducing all of the preparation and setup, it allows them to teach more theory and foundation. So that's just one of the proposals. The second proposal is to reduce the amount of material covered in an exam. Now, instinctively, you might think, hmm, well, surely that means the exam will be easier. Well, not at all. No exam covers everything that's covered in a course. It's just not practical to do so. Instead of trying to cover everything, what they want to do for subjects are to have core foundational topics in which all the students will have covered as the baseline and then have greater options so that they will be able to choose a topic that they have covered. So they will then reduce the amount of sampling of the course covered in the exam by widening the options available for students. This is perhaps particularly important for history and geography where it's such a vast subject. Now, the core subjects, math, English and science, because of these are the fundamentals, they want to try and keep those as intact as possible, apart from the English speaking. So they're suggesting that no changes are made to these exams. But for optional subjects like the humanities and other subjects, they're considering shortening the sampling size by widening the breadth of options in the exam. On top of that, they're also proposing delaying the commencement of exams. Exams typically for GCSEs commence in May, and they're saying that perhaps it would be better to start after the summer half term, which is on the 7th of June, and then prolonging the exam period into July, later July. So this is what they are proposing. Reasonable or unreasonable? Well, there are pros and cons to all of this. Most crucially, if students aren't practicing field work and practical skills, if they go on to do their A-levels, this may have an impact on them. Furthermore, although they are saying that they want to reduce the sample by maximum, maximizing the breadth of options, well, there's a few problems with this. Number one, if a school has covered all the topics, it may potentially put those students at an unfair advantage because they will be able to draw upon a wider knowledge that other students will not have covered. More importantly and more crucially, research has shown that actually weaker students when presented with more options because they don't have necessarily the evaluation skills will actually choose questions that are more challenging and so tend to perform worse, even though obviously by having a breadth of question choice, you would think that it would actually help them, but research has shown time and time again that actually it puts them at a 
disadvantage. Perhaps even more crucially to this is that if a student wants to continue studying it, well, unless there's any changes in the A-level curriculum or the BTEC curriculum, they may miss out on some fundamental information that will then need to be caught up with later on. Now, starting exams later may seem like a great idea, but again, it may create a false sense of security. This might be because actually, even with the extension, it doesn't make up for the time where students have perhaps potentially lost. Furthermore, with extending the commencement date and then elongating the exam through the summer, well, the weather conditions are a lot hotter. Students typically aren't used to sitting exams at the height of it. And so that may have an impact. Hay fever may also be high because of the pollen, pollen count, and that can have a detrimental impact, not only on sitting the exam, but also preparation for the exam. Perhaps even greater than this is the fact that there'll be a shorter time for marking and then human error, there may be more mistakes. And on top of all of this, any tinkering or changes to exams can potentially throw students as they're used to doing practice papers in a particular format. Now, whatever changes potentially are made, whether it's, you know, lengthening the time of the exam because of the different options, well, that could then throw students with their timings. For students who have 25% extra time, their exams could be between two and a half to three hours long. And again, they may not have the stamina to go through the exam paper in fine detail. So what can we do? Well, as mentioned earlier, one have your say, it's really important that you voice your opinion by completing the survey. And then the second thing, I know it's gonna sound ludicrous, is not to panic. Everyone is in the same situation and there are opportunities to resit if necessary. Some schools are advocating sitting the exams in January and then again in summer. For example, I know the AQA engineering examination has an opening in January. And so some students, some schools are saying that their students will sit the exam then, see how they fare. If they do really well, great, one less exam to do. And if not so well, they have then the opportunity to do it again in the summer. Now remember, maths, English and science can be reset in the autumn term. So those are the core subjects. And then the other subjects are stag staggered with January and the summer. So they could effectively resit them if the exam results are not what that child needs. And then more crucially than that is just reassure your child to do their best to keep on top of the material. Liaise with schools as best you can. Teachers are there to help. And if you're home educating, then getting in touch with any course providers that you're perhaps doing with online learning. Or again, if you've formulated your own, you know, contact the exam boards. Bear in mind that at the moment, they're obviously receiving lots of predicted grades from schools and teachers, so they may not be as forthcoming. But after the official results day in August, I'm sure they will be able to to have better contact. But again, it's always worth just emailing or giving them a call as well to see what happens. But remember, they're still thinking about what to do and the deadline is the 16th of July. After that, they will then give out the details of what they propose for the summer of 2021. So perhaps just wait until that is done before they're making contact because at the moment we still are uncertain. But the biggest takeaway is not to panic, to continue working consistently through material and focusing perhaps more on applying knowledge by looking at a variety of exam papers so that your child can apply their knowledge to the best of their ability. And remember, there are opportunities to resit if necessary. Now, in the next video, I think it's really important to look at evaluation skills. How do we evaluate in an exam what question to choose? And in the next video, that's what we're gonna cover. We're gonna cover out how we can help prepare our 
children on what question to take. Now, this might seem very advanced, but actually children in the 11 plus exams will have to make a choice in creative writing, write a story or description. Not always, but they could be faced with that choice. And definitely at GCSE, they have to make a, a decision too. And with the current situation, they may have to have greater evaluation skills for geography and history and other subjects. So it'd be great for them to develop it. And I can will give you the tools to empower your children in making choices in exam conditions. But that's for the next video. So tune in for then. But for now, remember 16th of July is the deadline for the summer 2021 GCC exams for our kids. So make sure that you you know, talk with your children if you have year 10 children, if they are between 14 and 16 and are nearing the end of their GCC course, get their voice. Then you can be their voice and the voice of yourself by completing the survey. Consider the pros and cons and remember resets can happen, but prepare fully by being consistent, working effectively and efficient, efficiently over this course until then. I would love to hear from you. Please leave your you know, comments in, in the comment section below the video and I will see you next time for evaluating style questions and how to make a decision, an informed choice in an exam. Bye for now.